On today's show, if you've ever wondered if there's an art to rod making, well, we have the answer. Mel Dickey, local legend, master rod builder, and only 95 years old. Later, what you need to know about walking or driving on the ice, and what you need to know if you go through the ice. Next, we'll float a river with a fishing guide who's in his boat, well, year-round. And while it never seems to be too cold to go fishing with River Dan, he does have a cautionary tale to tell. <laughs> Our Minnesota Bound Classic this week takes a look at a pretty little feathered friend, but don't let this bird fool you. One of its nicknames is the Camp Robber. Those stories and more, next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. It's time for you to meet Mel Dickey. Don't know him? Well you will, because he sits in a corner of a store and does amazing things. The Wild Goose Sports Shop in Rochester, Minnesota, you might say is very Minnesota typical. A few stuffed wish fish on the walls. Lots of fish and stuff on the shelves. And live minnows by the dozen. But that's not everything the Wild Goose offers. It may be the only tackle store in Minnesota with a resident legend. That's him over there in his corner of the store. Mel Dickey. Master Fishing Rod Maker. Well, sort of. Mel the Legend is more like a fishing rod artist. Now I'll put the thread right on the rod, and you actually don't have to use the table to do it. You can, after you've done it a thousand times, you can just attach your thread to the rod like this with a piece of tape, and then I'll put multiple threads on at a time, and I can change this wrap into a fish or an eagle or a diamond or rosebud or whatever kind of pattern I want to put on here. See, I'm working with four strands on one spool, and I can build where they cross into a diamond shape. As he works, perhaps you noticed what I noticed, what everyone sees. It's a steady hand you got there, Mel. Thank you. Uh, they're old hands. They've been doing it a number of years. Mel has been renting this corner from the owner of Wild Goose for more than 25 years now. He is one of the most honest, trusty individuals that I've ever met in my life. I've got nothing but respect for the man and envy for what he can do on those rods. <laughs> but there's more you should know about Mel Dickey. You should know Mel shows up for work three to four days a week. If he's not in the store, he's a substitute math and science teacher in Rochester schools. That was my field in college. And I started rod building and teaching kids and adult classes in how to build their own rod. Matter of fact, I enjoy teaching others to do it more than I do making a rod and selling it. That's a pretty busy schedule. Mel the Legend is 94 years old. You know, I learned it pretty much by making all of my own mistakes. Howdy, Mel. How are you this morning? Good. Good. What can I do for you? I got a broken tip here, Mel. Uh -oh. Mike Fisher is one of Mel's rod making students. He's a youngster. He's only 78. So you work every day here alongside Mel? Yes, sir. Six days a week. Are you an employee or independent, uh, just partner here? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> so there you have it. 
In their own little corner of the wild goose bait shop, Mel and Mike toil as fishing rod artists to please the palate of serious anglers everywhere. When we return, what you need to know on the ice, especially if it's too thin. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers, Ice Force, Star Bank, Radco Truck Accessories, and by Evanroot, the official outboard motor of Minnesota Bound. Welcome back. At this time of year, the ice in Minnesota for you ice anglers may or may not be safe. So our next story is, how do you keep yourself safe? If you've ever walked on a frozen lake, this is every angler's greatest nightmare. But rather than a nightmare, you might say Sam Jaquith is living the dream. He knows how to survive. Because teaching ice safety and rescues is his business. Wow. I've been an instructor now doing this for uh, 30 years. Wow. Plunge after plunge, the teacher willingly treads on thin ice to teach others how to survive or to rescue. What happens when you fall through the ice? If you don't have any rescue equipment, any safety equipment with you, we're gonna demonstrate how hard it is going to be to get out of that ice. And then we'll go on, uh, demonstrate just a simple use of the rope throw bag. Another demonstration about how not to die. One evening off the ice with Cottage Grove firemen. Thank you for coming. The lesson was about saving lives or yourself in ice rescue situations. How many out here are fisher people? Okay, great. What's the thinnest ice that you go out on? Let's see what the DNR says. DNR says two inches of ice. Yeah, stay off. Other precautions an ice angler may take, Jaquith says, includes wearing a PFD, the same safety device worn in the summer. If you do go in, guess what? You pop up. Or a coat with flotation also works well. It'll float a 200 to 250 pound person. It's just a shell coat. But remember, if you fall in, you don't have much time to get help. Maybe five to 10 minutes of muscle control. If you don't get out within that first 10 minutes, you're probably not gonna get out. Perhaps the most important safety tool is to carry ice picks. Not only for crawling out of a hole in the ice, if you would fall in, but ice picks may come in handy for saving somebody else. Ice picks, gotta have them. Talking ice safety is one thing, practicing ice rescues is another, of course. Yet after 30 years of thin ice, Sam still seems willing to fall through it. Every year, especially in Minnesota, land of 10,000 lakes, we lose so many people to cold water uh, accidents. And we shouldn't be losing them with very simple safety precautions are taken. It'll save your life. Hey, there I'm Bill Shirk, the man about the woods. You know, getting around during the winter months through snow and ice, we all know that can be kind of tough at times. But I've got a little invention here that's kind of fun and it's pretty useful too. Let me show it to you. It's called a polk sled. You know, polk is actually a Finnish word for polka and it means a toboggan used for sport and hauling stuff. You can actually make one of your own with just a few bucks. I use an otter sled because otter's a partner of ours. And all you do is drill some holes around it thread some line through so you can hook your bungee cords to it. That's also what you use to pull the sled. And then the fun part are these poles right here. I use PVC with a little rope through them. All you do is attach them to the front corners and you go for a walk. 
click to the sled, click to my butt pack, and then you just go. Polks are awesome because these poles keep the sled from sliding into you when you're going down a hill. What's really cool about these things is they'll take a lot of weight. For ice fishing, I can put 80 pounds of gear in them, no sweat through the deep snow. We'll even use it for winter camping. Heck, we go into the boundary waters and we'll haul 100 pounds of gear a guy and pull these things four miles. Piece of cake, they're nice and easy, even in the deep snow. I'll even put my son in sometimes and we'll go for walks in the snow at night. Polk sleds, really cool little winter inventions. Try one, you might just like them. Coming up, we'll share a boat with River Dan, known for being able to take the cold on the river. He also has a story to back it up. Closed captioning is brought to you by Kinetico. Coming up, you know, some folks never leave their boat. Can you imagine that? While the rest of us are standing on ice, a guy named River Dan still floats in his boat catching fish. Travis Frank has the story. From his weathered boots to his fishing ink. Faith, family, and fishing in that order. Everything about Dan Ricks is one of a kind. Ah, it's beautiful out. More than 200 days a year, he trailers his boat to the river. At 15 degrees, the Mississippi River flows empty and quiet. Most anglers would rather be in a warm fish house. Just another day on the water. But you don't get the nickname River Dan from sitting in a fish house. Right now, I think we can fish something like seven miles of river that's open so you can fish. I don't have to worry about kicking the sand off. I'll just, just kick the snow. Just perfect conditions for this time of year. There's always a chance to get a big one. That's what I love most about this. On this river, walleyes grow big, and the season never closes. This is kind of a lonely river this time of the year. This time of the year, it's kind of a lonely river, yeah. But it's not lonely for fish. I just love fishing in the boat. It's peaceful. You look around, you got bald eagles up in the tree watching you, and you're just enjoying God's good outdoors. You can't beat it. That didn't take very long. <laughs> Go show it to the walleye. You're the man. It's a beautiful fish. Each walleye Dan considers a blessing from above. It was on a cold winter day, just like this, that he nearly caught his last. December 2nd, 2006. It was a cold day, it was five degrees out and 12 below wind chill. Wasn't a soul out on the water. Got in there and looked at my graph and it said 33.7 degrees. I'm going, Brr, it's cold out. And I figured, well, I'm gonna go two and a half miles up the river to fish, hit the throttle to go wide open. Next thing I know, I was airborne. I hit a dead head and I got ejected out of the boat into freezing water at 40 miles an hour. And I had to swim to get to the actual surface of the water, I got a breath, and I sunk again immediately because I had my big boots on. So I had to unzip my cover haul and take my boots off. But when I got to the surface the second time, my body was in convulsion because the water is so cold, you're hyperventilating. And I looked to see where I was and I said, oh my word, I'm gonna die out in a stupid river or some stupid fish. I was over 100 yards from shore, at least 100 yards from shore. I was out in the middle. Only thing I could think of is my grandkids. My grandkids need me. I was so cold, the only thing I could move was my arms like this. And I just kept praying, oh please Lord, let me make it to shore. Before I knew it, I kicked the bottom and I turned around, there's two guys on shore. And they said, come on, bud, you can make it. Rescuers call him a walking miracle. At 93 degrees, medically, your organs are supposed to shut down. You're pretty much done. So I'm one of the few people that have had a core temperature, probably high 80s. 
that had never lost consciousness. Because if I would have lost consciousness, I wouldn't be here today. These are the actual boots that I went swimming in the river with, right here. The they day that you went in the water, were there laces on those boots? Yep. And they haven't been laces in the boots since. He wears them as a reminder to keep trudging. Turns out that cold swim was the wake-up call Dan had prayed for. See, I was mad at God because I was mad because where's God when bad things happen to good people? My men's group asked me what they could pray for me for. And I said that God would reveal his power to me and show me that he's real. Well, he threw me in the river. There's my answer right there. And I'm here today, you know, just by the grace of God, I'm here and I'm using the opportunity to be able to impact other people's lives. Today he shares his story as a way to encourage those struggling through life's hardest challenges. Every day is a new opportunity to do something. An opportunity for something special. There's a, got oh, oh, it's a dandy, it's huge! Nice! <laughs> oh, baby! Look at that! Oh, man, look at that! Look at that one! <laughs> Yeah, right there, I guess, is why you come on in the middle of winter. Right. Holy cow. A little cold never felt so good. Thanks to River Dan. Good job. And some help from up above. Up next, we're going up close and personal with the Gray Jay. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Borderview Lodge, Ellsworth Creamery, and by Totem Resorts. Time now for our Minnesota Bound Classic. Most of us know the Blue Jay when we see it, right? Well, if you go up into northern Minnesota, into the Boundary Waters and beyond, you're apt to run into a bird called the Gray Jay. It's also known as the Camp Robber, a very friendly Camp Robber. Sometimes when you go north, you'll know it. You'll know it without a compass, without a snowy ride through the conifers. Nature will tell you when you're really north, because you're up north when, out of nowhere, this fellow appears. This is the Gray Jay. It's a bird with lots of different names. Whiskey Jack, Camp Robber, Moose Bird. So many names because the bird has been company to so many travelers in the north. And it happens almost magical. Pause in the woods, and if you're lucky, a Gray Jay will show up at your side as if it knew you were coming. Call it a welcome wagon greeter in feathers. But there's a reason for all of this birdie hospitality. The bird's boldness is part of another agenda, in a word, survival. The Ojibwa called it Whiskajack, and according to Indian lore, the bird is very sly, almost a human in gray feathers. The north might be pretty to look at, but in winter, it's a harsh world out there. Even the big critters, a wandering moose, will not find life easy. Imagine what it's like when you're hungry and all you've got are sharp eyes and an even sharper beak. The Gray Jay thinks nothing of helping itself to anybody's food, thus the name Camp Robber. But survival is not a crime in the North. In the waning days of winter, the Gray Jay will begin nesting despite lingering snowbanks and cold temperatures. Then the bird will remember its secret tidbits tucked amid the treetops. In the meantime, the bird seems to cherish having company. And soon you'll cherish having a friend in feathers, especially when you reach that special place up north. <laughs> I will never forget the camp robber sitting on my head, okay? Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Sharon, of course, always the star of the show, Raven. Hmm? Is that who you are? Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 
800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.